What is up, everybody? I am Taylor. This is the Cranky Comic Book Review Show for... I know I have to check my... I never remember what date it is. August 3rd, 2022. How the hell is it August already? Time just feels like it's standing still and flowing into the future all at once. Uh, yeah, anyways. Uh, it's a short-ish week again because uh, the Diamond didn't get their books out to my LCS in time. So, no windy books. Uh, and <laughs> some of these books came out last week because uh, shipping issues and supply chains and whatnot. So some of these are Marvel books from last week, some are from this week. So it's all Marvel and DC. And the theme of this week, if there is one, is internal monologuing. It's just something, you ever have something where you just notice while you're reading it and, and you read it and you see patterns through things that maybe are there, maybe aren't? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But like, it seems like a storytelling device that's been used very heavily and it just really stuck out to me this week. Uh, so lots of these books have a lot of internal monologues. I'm take that one out for what you will. None of them really struck me as a really true either. I don't know. Maybe my brain works differently. Maybe I just don't uh, think in internal monologue style. Who knows? Whatever. <laughs> but let's get into this. Worst to best, as always, there are no rules, people. It's all chaos out there. All chaos and destruction and some of crappy books. It's not a not not a great week for books. And some of that probably has to do with the fact that there are no indies. So I'm relying on the big two, which is always dangerous. And uh, let's start with this lump of crap. Uh, it's a Spider Verse number one. I, okay, I am not immune to buying books just to spec on. Because you buy these books, you put them aside, and then you're like, oh, now it's worth some crap. I hope this book is worth some crap down the line, because it is crap. It is not a very good book. Uh, there are four, five, whatever stories in here. Spider-Man Noir, Aranya, Spider-Layered, and Spider-Rex. Uh, even the, the goddamn dinosaur had an internal monologue going on. Uh, Aranya was just clunky. It, it felt like it repeated part of the story over and over, and it's just not very well done. Spider-Man Noir, all internal monologue, really tiny panels, and just boring. Uh, and then Spider Layered was the best of a bunch when it's like a three or four page little intro story that really had nothing to do with things. This is all like a setup for crap, and like I've never read any of the other previous Edge of Spider-Verse books because I don't really care. But I'll probably keep these because they tend to be worth some money down the line. So, I don't know. Don't read it. <laughs> just buy it and put it away. And don't get your grubby little fingerprints all over it. And uh, just turn around and sell it. Be that dirty, flipping whore. Just be it. Embrace it. Embrace it, you filthy heathens. All right. Uh, no. Whatever. Next, we have Strange number four. I hate this series with a passion. I normally like Jed McKay, but I really don't like what he's doing here. And Ferreira's art is better than it has been in the previous issues, but the only reason I'm still in this is because I'm almost a finish line. And that that's not a good reason to keep reading a book, but I, I, I'm invested in it. I, I Now I need to know how the damn thing ends. Clea is not a likable character. And that's fine. You don't I need every character to be likable. Even every protagonist doesn't need to be likable. But they have to be interesting. They have to have some flaws. And her only real flaw is arrogance. The threats never seem real. They never seem like a... I don't know. Nothing about this ring's true. And it, it's, I get it. It's a comic book. It's Marvel. None of it is true. But it's just kind of a mess. And I don't know. I, I don't understand the point of this book. I don't understand... Jed McKay's thoughts on it. I generally like his stuff. But this book is a miss for me. And it has been from issue number one. And I don't want to get... I'm not going to dedicate more time to it. Because I don't give a shit. Alright. Uh, next we have Ghost Rider number five. Benjamin Percy and other folks writing another Marvel book. Uh, Smith on the art. Art's fine. Art is actually not bad. It's kind of gothy and... Uh, I don't know. It kind of fits the title. Uh, uh, this this book thus far, up until this issue, and this issue kind of included, has been like the old Hulk TV show where Johnny Blaze wakes up and doesn't remember what happened the next night and what the Ghost Rider did and, like, you know, that went and caused terror or helped people or whatever. So, you know, like, Hulk, Hulk, where's Banner? Wake up in a barn with no clothes. It's actually a moment where he wakes up, I think, in a barn with no goddamn clothes in here. Uh, but yeah, this is not the strongest of this book. It needs to start going somewhere, and I think it's starting to. The, the B-plot is starting to come to the forefront a little bit and starting to be a little bit more of an A-plot, and that's the more interesting part of this book. Otherwise, it's just Ghost Rider going from town to town doing stuff. Uh, and it's clear he's not right in the head. 
and visually and everything else too. And then there's like a hell ride. You get all these other cameo appearances for no damn reason. And this is not not the strongest issue. I might give it one more, but if it doesn't turn into something, I might be done with this. I, I know it's gotten some acclaim and it's and it's gotten some other folks seem to like this more. It's just it's not doing it for me. So. Speaking of books that are not doing it for me, and I'm done after this one, because I'm not getting more vested, people. I'm not getting more vested. Or Jed McKay book that I don't like. So maybe I don't like Jed McKay. Maybe I just like him on Moon Knight. Oh, whatever. Uh, Iron Cat number two. Uh, I don't care. It, it's uh, internal monologuing of this person. Tamara Bond villain? No, that's the colorist. I can't think of her name. Whatever. Uh... Yeah, Felicia Hardy did some bad shit back in the day, or good shit, and screwed somebody over, and now this person wants revenge, and they're in an iron suit, and causing trouble, and and then there's an internal monologue <laughs> with the, the character. It's all right. It, it's not awful. It's middle of the road. It's I'm not vested in these characters, and, and it's just not all that interesting to me. And and what's happening is not even all that interesting. It, it it's not that clever. It's not that witty. It's just there's nothing to this to, for me to sink my teeth into. So I'm done after this one. I I'm I'm done though. I'm just not not doing it anymore. So all right, next, uh, Poison Ivy, number three, G Willow Wilson and Marcio Takara Marcia Marcia Takara. I can't remember much of that, but. I like the art of this. It, it, it feels like a vertical in a 90s art book. And actually, in a lot of ways, this title feels like a 90s vertical book. So, like, Poison Ivy dying, trying to do what her head is right, which, I don't know, she may not be wrong. Uh, but this issue is the weakest of this story thus far. It's just a weirdly quiet issue um, in a miniseries. Like, when you only have a certain amount of time to tell a story, a certain amount of space to tell a story, it's not an ongoing... Having a, a book where not much happens, and not much happens in this issue, it's just a really weird choice to me. Um, and yeah, it's it's not bad. Uh, it's all internal monologue. <laughs> Honestly, it's all Poison Ivy questioning herself and whether or not she's going batshit crazy or whether or not this is making the right choice. Or Harley Quinn, blah, yada, yada, yada. It's fine. It's not... Hard. It's this one I probably will give one more issue to because I like the first two better. The first two had more of a tone of like a gothic horror and and that I I dug more. And this one kind of is a it's a lull and it's just a weird spot for a lull. So I don't know. This could be a quick review this week. I think I don't know. I'm just not feeling like these in depth things. Uh, maybe we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, <laughs> Dark Crisis number three of seven. This is a limited series event of the summer from DC Comics, and it doesn't feel like a limited series event of the summer by DC Comics. It, it's okay. It just feels like it's a Justice League book, even though the Justice League are gone. There's no Justice League, but it doesn't feel like a big event book. It 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 it, it feels like yeah, Justice League disappeared, and everyone's coping with the shit, and that's that's it. It's all set up. Uh, it's for what it is. It is not awful. I mean, it, you know, if you're okay with it being that, and and you can put aside that the fact that it's called Dark Crisis, it's okay. I I mean, they're like, uh, Sampira's art is pretty decent. There's some fun splash pages in here. Um, it's just, it, it's still, we're three issues in, and it's still a setup to anything, really. There's still, like, stuff that happens, kind of, uh, and there's, you know, consequences, and there's, you know, Black Adam trying to build a team, and Damian Wayne trying to build a team, and team sucks because they're a shitty team, and then, you know, whatever. Not, I don't want to spoil the plot, but, like, it's just not a lot in here. And, and like, if you're going to call something a crisis book, it should be big and bombastic and bold. And have this summer eventiness to it. And I, I don't always love those things. But this just doesn't feel like an event book to me. It doesn't. It just feels like it should be part of a Justice League series. I don't know. So it's all right. All right, next we have Batman 126. Yeah, Chip Zdarsky, Jorge Jimenez. Uh, this is the second issue on Zdarsky's run. Uh, fail safe. It's mostly an action-packed issue. Uh, and it's, you know, it's got some of the things that I like in an action-packed superhero comic. It's well-choreographed fights. It's, uh, you know, uh, indefatigable villain that's of mysterious motives. Uh, you don't learn a whole lot there, but I think I, if, you, if you're into this, you can probably guess where it's heading. I don't think it's going to be crazy surprising in the next issue, although there is a last issue, last page uh, of the main story surprising here that is kind of fun if you're a longtime Batman reader or really versed in the Silver Age Batman history especially. Um, Jimenez's art is gorgeous as always. Um, 
and yeah, it's okay. It's 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 an interesting way to start a, a run to a Batman title. It's better. I've been liking this better than last issue, and I like it better than uh, Williamson's run on it, little run on it, and a whole lot better than Tynan's run on it. So it's picking up steam. It's still not fantastical, but it's not bad. Uh, I like the backup story in here better with uh, Selena Kyle and uh, dealing with the ramifications of uh, the Penguin's death and the reading of Penguin's will. It's not a lot, not crazy action-packed, but it's just a more interesting idea to me than the Batman stuff. I, I think part of the problem is, is like writers have a hard time with Batman because, it, you know, there's been thousands of books written about him and issues of, about him. So, like, trying to come up with something new, it's a daunting task. And uh, I, I have faith in Zdarsky to tell a good story, but I think a lot of these writers get so wrapped up in trying to tell a new twist on things that it just stands in the way of a good story sometimes. I'm not saying that's the case here. I'm not saying it's going to be the case here. It's just, I don't know, it could be. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I'm going to give it more issues, and it's off to a better start than the last stuff. So, All right, uh, next, the variant number two. I don't know if this came out this week or last week. Whatever, it's Marvel. Uh, this is uh, Gail Simone and Phil Noto. Phil Noto's art is kind of bland. It always has struck me as kind of bland. Uh, it, it's not bad. It's like sparse and just kind of personalityless <laughs> in a way. Uh, I like the this book a lot better than the first issue, though. It's Jessica Jones trying to do good, worried about things from her past with the Purple Man. So if you have any idea, if you've ever watched the Netflix series or if you ever have any idea what happened with earlier Jessica Jones and stuff, this ties into it. Um, and it ties into the ongoing updated stuff because she's married to uh, what's his nuts, Power Man, and they have a kid. And you know, it's dealing with that, and she's trying to get her life in order to do well. And then there's variants that show up, and she acts in a very Jessica Jones kind of way. Trying to do well, but then royally messing it all up. <laughs> and uh, messing up a lot of her personal life in the in the balance. And it's it's a it it it, it a lot of internal monologue. <laughs> uh, a whole lot. But this is just this kind of an intriguing one to me. I didn't expect this one to be this high on the list this week because I really didn't care for the first issue that much. I didn't really dig it. Um, but this this jumped up. The second issue is a lot better than the first issue. Um, although, again, I think Phil art, Phil's art is just kind of blah. It's a personal taste thing for me. And your mileage may vary on this book. If you're not into Jessica Jones as a character, this book's not going to do much for you because it's not crazy action-packed. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out if there's a good example of... Uh, uh, of, yeah, like this is the opening scene of this. Like it's a diner scene, and it's all dialogue, which is fine. It's just kind of I don't know. The either it's it's a way with how he choreographs the scenes, or also just a way that like how he draws the characters. They're just pretty I don't know, vanilla to me. And that's not. I mean, it's kind of a nitpicky complaint, I guess. But it is a superhero book, even though it's Jessica Jones out of costume and not technically. It feels like it should be grimmer, like grittier, a little bit darker, a little bit sketchier than the, than it is. So, it's not bad. All right, next. We've only got like three books left this week, people. Only three books left. Stick with me. We're getting there. Uh, the Moon Knight number 14, Jen McKay, again. And Capuccio on the art. Uh, this is Capuccio back on the art, which I appreciate. Uh, and this book, <laughs> all internal monologue. But uh, this is finally addressing something that's been lacking from the, the Moon Knight series up until this now yeah, part of what makes moon Knight nation character is is disassociative with identity disorder and like various writers have handled it in various ways and up until now mckay has ignored it like flat out just not dealt with it and this sort of explains why it's an interesting explanation and you you are kind of reintroduced to not characters but the different aspects of the moon Knight uh, personality in here and so if you've watched the series you're gonna get some of that or if you've read any other books you can get some of it Every it's a very inconsistently written character, and I I dig what McKay's doing on this title. I actually dig this issue a fair amount, um, even with the internal monologue, in which I'm a little bit sick of after all this crap this week. But uh, yeah, I don't want to spoil the mechanic he uses, but it's an interesting one. So yeah, without spoiling the plot, I know other I know I watched one other review, and the guy didn't really care for it that much. That said it seems directionless, but I, I disagree. I, I know this is kind of possibly a filler book, but I think this is like setting up what's happening next in this run. I know it's a, and I, I know these setup issues can be hit or miss, but I, I do think the actually more likely that the first 12 issues, maybe 13, because this is number 14, have been a setup to what's really going to be happening in this series. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to things going horribly wrong because you need to break down these heroes and have things go horribly wrong. Otherwise, you just have strange, and that's no fun. So, yeah, not bad. All right, 
Next, a book I really didn't expect to like and I forgot I put on my pull list, honestly. Uh, Sword of Azrael, number one. I did not read any of the Nightfall stuff back in the day. I, I liked the Kelly Jones covers, but I really kind of was not into Batman. I know that Azrael took over for Batman for a bit and was brutal and served some order of Saint Dumbass or something like that. I don't know, whatever. Uh, so I'm not crazy familiar with the character. Uh, and I don't think you really need to be. I also know that I, there was backup stories that Dan Waters wrote in Urban Legends, maybe? Didn't read those either. I don't know. There's too many Batman books out. Not reading 20 Batman books a month, God damn it! I'm like, fuck off, DC. Just narrow it down. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm not crazy up, on, up to date on this, uh, but this is also a character I'd never give a rat's ass about. But I like Dan Waters, so I figured I'd pick up this issue number one. And it's a pretty good issue number one. Uh, you know, Agile's trying to find peace in his life. Lots of internal monologue going on. Um, things go horribly wrong, like you want in a first issue. And his life gets upended. It's it's not like the craziest start to an issue. And it's and like if you if you've ever read any book title where the character seems at peace <laughs> and you know it's like not gonna last that's kind of this but you know you know in a kind of crap week for books uh this is this kind of rose to the top uh it's in a the art uh, gets a little ca cartoony in the faces in some ways uh in some places especially uh uh who's the art by nicola Kismishia, Kismishia, I'm not, yeah, I don't know, I'm not gonna, I'm not going i am going to butcher that last name, but yeah, like, I, it, it may not be able to tell, but like, the, the, the weird cartoony faces, especially on Azrael or whatever, Simon, St. Simon, I can't remember his not character name, um, kind of weird, but then it does go off into other territories and stuff, and, and does get a little grittier, the coloring, not bad, uh, and then, yeah, you get a little bit of, like, wonkiness in here that I kind of find interesting. It does seem like a Dan Waters book. If you've ever, ever read Once in Future, it seems like he's in his, like, wheelhouse when he's trying to, like, retcon stuff or change the past or add to past mythologies. And there's, there's, I, I think there's probably adding to past mythologies and a bit of changing up of what happened in the past with Azrael to make him actually a little more interesting. So, solid first issue. I, I'm, it's one of six. I'll, I'll give it at least one more. So, all right, next, uh, last book of the week, my favorite book this week, uh, and it, it again, I'll stop saying it, Ron V, Christian Ward, uh, Andr uh, what is it, <laughs> Aquaman, Andromeda number two, I had a choice of a couple colors, I, I like the Black Manda cover, uh, this is, it's been a long time since issue number one, it, or at least it feels like it, I don't know, these black label books are kind of sporadically put out, and, uh, I don't know. They're a ton of money. $7. Wait for a collection on this if you're not super invested. Uh, Aquaman's in this book, but he's not really the star. It, it, it's a, more of a horror, gothic horror book, which is where Ron V kind of tends to like place a lot of his writing, is in this sort of like uh, creepy horror element. And this seems like it owes a lot to uh, Alien and The Thing. So those, those uh, you know, but you put it in the ocean. So maybe The Abyss, whatever. You know, one of the, any, pick a, pick a kind of horror movie. Uh, where everyone's trapped in one thing, and you got it, and uh, it's it's well done. It's got it, a very atmospheric. Christian Ward's art is a little bit sketchy in places, but uh, it fits the title, um, and and it's dealing with like I don't know. You don't really know what it's dealing with, honestly. Like this book is all atmosphere <laughs> right now. Like it's about this crew that are trying to find out what's going on with this alien vessel. And it really doesn't have much to do with Aquaman at this point, although Aquaman's there, and like you interact with Aquaman, you see. But like it's a, it's definitely more of a, yeah, like a trapped in, trapped in somewhere horror thing where like you could get out, but there's corporations at work, and then there's people, personalities, and starting to go mad, and yeah, uh, it, it's not hiding its influences. It's pretty well done for for using its influences, and it was my favorite breed this week. I probably, I really would suggest waiting for it's all. For it to be completed, because I think it'll read better in a completed form. Uh, because I read this, and I'm like, well, I should probably go back and read number one. Because I kind of didn't remember entirely what happened in that one. And I don't love when that happens. It's just been so damn long. Again, maybe it hasn't been. It just feels like it's been forever since that first one came out. So, get it collected. It'll probably be cheaper. Or read it digitally. That'll do it for you. I, I mean, this, it, the black label, this giant format, does help Christian Ward's art. And his art is gorgeous. Uh, and it like Aquaman is this mysterious kind of badass presence in here, and uh, Black Manta is not a joke in here either, which is kind of a refreshing thing too. So, yeah, my favorite book this week on a fairly light week for me. So, yeah, there you go. That's what I got. Uh, yeah, that's what I've got for you, people. Uh, I don't know. 
Not awful, but lots of it. Oh, there is some internal monologue going on in here, too. Not as much as the rest of the books. But yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's an okay week for comics. So I'm going to get out of here. Uh, don't be a dick, even if you can't ignore those voices in your head while you're reading comics about voices in their heads. See ya.